Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Richard Widmark in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a man who tried to learn a lesson the hard way. He bet his life on the turn of a card. It's called The Card Game. Our star, Mr. Richard Widmark. This is Harlow Wilcox with the $100,000 question. Have you signed up in the Autolite family charity drawing? If so, you may be one of the 25 persons selected to name your favorite church, hospital, school, or other recognized local or national charity to receive a big share of $100,000. To enter is simple. Listen to this on-the-spot interview in Bronxville, New York. May I have your name, please? Yes, I'm Mrs. William Keith. I understand that you've signed up for the Autolite family charity drawing. Is that right? That is right. When you signed up, was there any trouble to it? None whatsoever. I just signed my name and address. And no obligations? No obligations. Well, that's fine, and may I wish you good luck. Thank you. So, friends, sign up tomorrow at any or all of these Autolite family car dealer showrooms. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Not much time left, so don't wait. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Mr. Richard Widmark in The Card Game, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. That $5? Yeah, that $5. And me with a little pair of ducks. I'm out. Too much for you, eh? Too much. What do you say? I'm thinking. I thought. <laughs> After you, Regan. And five more. Mm. Betting into my pair of eights, Regan. Well, your funeral. I'll see you, Regan. Raise you another five. Call you. Triplets, Regan. Three eights. Yeah, beats me, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> another day, another dollar. Let's see what happens. Huh? Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. You're right back. You understand? Yeah, I'm in. All right, in. Huh? Just a minute. Yeah, that was kind of tough on you, betting into my three-eighths with a lousy pair of queens. It was a good pair of queens. It's not good enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way the game goes, eh? I know how the game goes, Larry. Don't look so sad for me. I'll win it back. Mm, sure you will. Sure you will. Yeah. You weren't thinking of quitting for the night, were you? Well, as a matter of fact, I was, yeah. <laughs> I thought you wanted to play poker. I did, but I'm broke. That's enough. Yeah. You're a real two-bit player, aren't you? Walk in here with sixty, seventy dollars and figure you'll take us. You ain't ever going to take no one, Regan. You're just a cheap little two-bit chiseling player. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. I'm going to get lucky some night, then I'm going to clean up on a game. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Now you go home and dream about it, kid. But what's going to happen to you is just what happens to all cheap boys. You're not a big-time gambler. You're just a two-bit chiseler. And don't come back here for a game anymore. We don't like the way you play. I knew a man in Bayonne once. He started out flipping dimes in the morning, and by midnight he'd been in one crap game and one card game, and he had $75,000. But me... It hasn't happened yet. But someday it will. But the baby's due in a couple of weeks, Jenny. You shouldn't be working. I called your office this morning. They told me you quit two days ago. Six jobs in six months, Chick. Well, I, I didn't want to worry you, Jenny. <laughs> I, I guess I'm just not cut out to be a real estate salesman. But you don't have to go to work, honey. Yes, I do. 
I have a very special reason. We haven't got any money. I'll pay the rent, Jenny. How? Well, I can't lose forever. Chick. Look, Jenny, if I can just get a stake, I mean a good stake, and get in the right game, I... Well, I know our luck will change. You've got to change, Chick. I thought I could change you once. I even thought you were changing when you told me you'd take a real job and all, but it's no use. You're a gambler. You always will be. Always waiting for change of luck. There's just no cure for you. Oh, honey, we've had better days, lots better days. Don't say things like that. Don't you see, no matter what you win or lose, it won't make any difference? You'll always be wanting a bigger stake, a better game. Look, I knew a man from Bayonne I know, I know, I know. $75,000 in one day. What do you suppose that 75000 meant to him? When he had it, it was just another stake. Well, let's not argue about it, Jenny. Come on. I don't want to argue anymore, Chick. I know it's hopeless. It's so hopeless that I'm going to divorce you. Jenny. No. no. Don't put your arms around me, please. Oh, honey, I... I just couldn't make it without you. You'll have to, Chick. I mean it. But, Jenny, what do I you think I... have to leave pretty soon. When I come back, I hope you'll have your things packed and moved out of here. Well, look, look, suppose I, I got another job. Would that help? Would it cure you? Sure, sure it would. If, it, if it's a good job where I could make some money. Honestly? Sure. Or would you take the first paycheck and go out and get into a poker game like you did last night? Oh, well, that's just it. If I can get enough money to get into the right kind of a game, I can make things all right, darling. You wouldn't have to work or, or worry about anything. Chick, I can't do that. That's why I'm asking you to leave. But you've gone along with me all this time. Yes, hoping all this time. But now things are different. We're going to have a baby, Chick. Don't you understand? We can't go on this way. You've got to get a job and keep it and stop gambling. I'll get us a house, Jen, and some money and... Well, I've got to have a change of luck. Change of luck. Oh, Chick. Jenny. 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 <laughs> All I need is a little luck, and I can make it all in one night instead of working 40 years. Tonight, I can make it before Jen leaves me. I know I can. If I can just get in the right game. If I can just figure a way of getting into the right game. Always like to make clothes for you, Mr. Regan. No trouble at all with the fitting. Yeah. So I have some nice worsteds and some imported flannels if you'd like to order some today. Oh, I'm afraid I don't have the time today, but I'll, uh, I'll get in as soon as I can. How much do I owe you for the suit? Uh, it's gone up a little since you were in, Mr. Regan. Three hundred in tax. Hmm. All right, just send me the bill. Sure. Uh, say, do you, uh, you still drive that fancy sports car you bought in Europe? Oh, yes. Huh? <laughs> Once you get used to one of those things, you don't want to drive anything else. Yeah, I guess that's so. How much to set you back? Twelve thousand dollars. Wow. Well, if the prices you charge for a suit, it shouldn't be too much of a jolt. I have overhead, Mr. Regan. Terrible overhead. My tailors come pretty high. Two hundred a week for a master tailor. All right. Well, uh, I'd like to borrow your car, won't you? Hmm? Now, how long have I been getting clothes from you? Well, off and on, ten years, I guess. Well, then don't look at me as though we just met this afternoon. I'd like to borrow the car for tonight. A favor. Well, of course, Mr. Regan. Here, yeah, it's out front. Thanks, thanks a lot. You're thinking of buying a car just like it, and you want to try it out. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's let it stand that way. Well, when will you be back? Tomorrow morning, okay? Anytime, it's fine. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Mr. Regan. Yeah? I've got to tell you what's on my mind. What's that? Yeah, well, first, I'll tell you that you'd be surprised the four flushers I've got on my books who couldn't pay $30 for a suit, let alone $300. i am remembering that you've always paid me cash. But I haven't seen you in a year, and the day you came in and asked me to send you a bill. Now, I'm not worried about that. Well, you're worried about something. Like I said, it's been a year, and I've heard that things haven't gone so well with you lately, and I'm wondering if the suit and car may have something to do with it. Mr. Regan, you wouldn't do anything foolish, would you? Walshie, I'll tell you something. Now, you know that there are 
some people who were impressed by expensive clothes and fancy cars and all that stuff. And sometimes it's a good idea to impress them. Now tell me, does that sound foolish? The next was to sit down and figure, how do you get into a big game of no dough? That one I couldn't figure. I had an idea, but I had to find out if it would work or not. I knew one thing. If you want to win big, you have to take chances. And I took one when I walked into the bar. Mr. Regan. Hello, Harry. Well, like old times. Yeah. Well, it be, Mr. Regan. Well, let's try your scotch. Sure. I haven't seen you around for a long time, Mr. Regan. I've been out of town, Harry. Vegas? Yeah, Vegas. Where's your suntan? <laughs> I stayed indoors. <laughs> I guess you did. Uh, water, soda, what? Just like that, that's fine. That's smart. Only way to take it. Sandals uh, doing all right here, huh? In every department. Out front and behind the front. You uh, going to play a little tonight, huh? No, I don't think so, Harry. Just stop by for a drink. Uh-huh. What? You know about the big game Santo has every night. Real big. Yeah, I've heard something about it. Sure. Who are you trying to kid? What? You never in all your life ever came into a joint like this just for a drink. You're a gambler, Mr. Regan, and there's no cure for it. Well, hello, Harry. Oh, good evening, Mr. Santo. Chick uh, Regan, isn't it? That's right. The doorman pointed you out. He, he raved about your car. Pretty nice thing to get around in. I like it, Jim. Hey, now I remember. You do? Yeah. You was pit boss for me in one of my places. You, you used to call me Mr. Santo. Did I? Yeah. Well, let's say I've uh, changed, Jim. <laughs> okay, let's say that. Buy you one? No, 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 thanks. Suit yourself. Fill this up again, will you, Harry? Sure. Anything wrong? Yeah, just, uh, just wandering about you. Uh-huh. Well, why don't you wander somewhere else? <laughs> Real cocky these days, huh, kiddo? That's all right. I like that. Means, uh, means you got dough. <laughs> Say, Chick, the crowds play back in there behind those curtains, but upstairs I have something else going, something uh, special. Yeah. Here you are. Thank you. Now, we could use another player. How, uh, how you like to come to my office and try it out? Try out what? What are you talking about? A good game for some real father. No limit. You inviting me? I'm inviting you. Sorry, I just dropped by for a drink. Well, have it and then come on up. No, I didn't bring any money. Thanks, just the same. Well, your IOU is all right with me, Kato. I know you're good for it. How do you know that? Well, he, you've been in the business a long time. You know, you know what happens to a guy who can't pay his way. When do you begin? Right away. Let's go. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Richard Widmark in The Card Game. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. And now, in connection with the Autolite family charity drawing, here's another actual interview as recorded in Greenwich, Connecticut. How do you do, sir, and may I have your name? Michael Spazano. I understand that you just signed up for the Autolite family charity drawing, is that right? That's right, sir, I have. And uh, why did you sign up? Well, our local school needs an addition, and if my, my name is picked, I'll designate them. I think that's wonderful, and the best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. Why don't you help your favorite local or national charity, too? It won't cost you a cent, and you have an opportunity to be among the 25 persons selected. Remember, there's nothing to try or buy, nothing to write or solve. 
All you do is visit any Autolite family car dealer showroom and fill out a registration form. Your entry may be worth many thousands of dollars to your local church, hospital, or other pet local or national charity. So why not visit one of these car dealers, DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler? There's not much time left, so sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Richard Widmark in Elliot Lewis's presentation of The Card Game, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It's simple. All you need is the right night, the right game, and the right cards. Then you sit down and you remember everything you ever learned and every little two-bit game you've ever played. And you do it all just right. And when you're finished, you're on your feet once and for all. You've got a pile. And then you give it up. Yeah, that's the way to be cured. But you don't know that's why I came here tonight, do you, Santo? You don't know anything. All right, spread that deck out there. Let's see who deals. Come on, come on. I'll introduce you to the boys. Fine, sure. Boys. Hey. This is Chick Regan. All right. Hi. Bill Archer. Chick. Hello, Bill. Hi. Lou Humble. Lou. I want to make yourself comfortable, Chick. Thank you. That's nice to have some fresh blood in the game. Yeah. Take a card. Hmm? Oh, sure. Queen. Three. Ten. Well, what do you know? Ace. Kill deal. Oh, here you are, Chick. That's $10,000 worth of chips. Uh, too steep? No, 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 fine. All right. And the up. Well, good luck, everybody. That's how I got here. That's how I got into this. That's why now I look into different faces from the games I'm used to. These guys aren't kidding. They're cold about it. Hard. But if my luck changes, I'll be in business. I'll have everything we ever wanted in all our lives. I'll take it to her and I'll show her and I'll say, Jenny, Jenny, here it is. I won't gamble anymore. I'll beat them all, Jenny. All I need is one hand. Just that one hand to get me going. Come on, let's stop it. A thousand. Thousand? Okay for me. Thousand? Thousand more. Kind of frisky tonight, aren't you? You gonna stay in? I mean, your thousand and a thousand more. Here we go again. Six. Queen. Ace. Pull it for you, Chick. Yeah. I get a king. Ace bets. Uh, let me check my whole card. Five hundred. I see another. I will, too. You can find it out yourselves. Everybody else out? Okay, here we go. Ten with the queen. Another ace with the ace. Oh, oh, that. How do you like that guy's run? Well, what do you know? A king with my king. Bet the aces? Thousand. Her vases and a pair of kings showing. I gave up a long time ago. Jim? With a pair of kings, I have to see one more card. Ten for you. Jack for me. You still bet? Ten thousand. You really mean 
means it. Yeah. Ten, huh? Ten. Take it. I'm winning. It's beginning to happen just the way I hoped it'd happen. There's nothing that can stop me now. I'll beat them all right off their feet. Because the cards are coming to me, coming to me. And they can't do anything about it. In? Hmm? You in? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm in. Me too. You're called. Pretty aces, pretty jacks. Two pair, huh? Yeah. It's too lucky for me. I might have known. What do you say, chick? I've got three queens, Jim. Hmm? Let's see him. Three pots in a row, chick. You got the whammy on me or something, huh? Just luck. Take your money. Yeah, sure. Harry. Harry! Go, Mr. Sasson. Bring us a new deck. This Regan's getting too lucky. That's right, Santo. Get good and sore. Fumble around the rest of the night if you want to. It's okay with me. Because the sorer you get, the better off I'll be. And the better it'll be for my wife and my kid. So keep getting sore. I like it, Mr. Sando. I like it. Good beat. What time you got? Uh, 5.30. What do you say? Shall we call it a night? I'm all for it. How about how about one more round? The chick here has been awfully lucky. I'd li like another crack at him. Okay, chick? Or do you want to cash in? I'll play one more. I kind of thought you'd rather walk out. You thought wrong. I'm winning. That's right, kiddo. You're winning. Uh, not me. I've dropped 13. I've had it for tonight. Me too. You hear that? They don't want to play anymore. Well, in that case, I guess... Uh, I'll... How, how, how you like to double that pot? Sure. Sure. I'll drop in tomorrow. Right because... now. How much, uh, how much you got there? 42,000. I'll cut you. High card, take all. Uh, look, Jim, why don't you... Why don't you shut up? There you are, chick. All or nothing. High card. You don't have to do it. Let him make up his own mind. You know, I had an idea he came in here tonight to see how far he could go. I don't know exactly what he had in mind, but he's always been a two-bit player. I still think he is. And I might be wrong, but I want to find out. Are you a two-bit player, Regan? Put your chips out, Jim. <laughs> okay. Pick a card. You first. Sure. Eight. Beat it. Three. Well, that's tough. That's tough. You play all night till you build up a nice hall and it all goes on one card. That's tough, chick. But uh, better luck next time. And look, you ain't a two-bit player. No hard feelings. No. I'm not even a one-bit player, Jim. Huh? My IOU's no good. Well, but that, that car of yours... It your... isn't my car. I haven't got a dime, Sando. I've been playing with your money all night. And you was going to walk out of here with it, huh? Yeah. You hear that? I heard. Yeah. Sorry, chick. You knew what you were doing. Harry, get the door. I don't want to remember what they did to me. But I'm going to as much as I can. I woke up in the morning. I was lying in a ditch next to a highway outside of town. No one would give me a lift because of the way I looked. 
But somehow I, I got home. And Jenny was gone. And that's really what finished it for me. They'd taken her to the hospital while I was with Santo. And Jenny had had our baby. Jenny. Jenny, darling. Chick, what happened to you? Oh, I'm, I'm all right, honey, but what about you? I told you. I told you I'm fine. And our baby boy is fine, but your face. Who did this to you? Who were they? Some people I tried to steal from, Jenny. What? I, I got in that one game I've always been talking about. I had it. I had it all for us. Enough for a house and enough for the kid. You were right, honey. It was just another stake so I could try for something bigger. I lost it all, Jenny. And I lost it while you were here having the baby. Chick. Well, I learned my lesson. This time I'm cured. No more gambling. Chick, are you sure? I'm sure, darling. Will you take me back? Yes, darling. Then I won. Didn't I? Yes, darling. You won. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Richard Widmark. This is Harlow Wilcox reminding you that there's only a few days left to sign up for the Autolite family charity drawing. Only a few days left to name your favorite local or national recognized charity to receive thousands of dollars in cash. To enter the drawing is as simple as this. Listen to an interview recorded in Elizabeth, New Jersey. This gentleman just signed for the drawing here at Murphy Brothers. May I have your name, sir? John Grenette. When you entered, just what did you have to do? All I did was sign my name and the address. Did you have to buy anything or try anything? Not a thing. Just fill out a form. Well, thank you very much and the best of luck. You're welcome. So don't wait any longer to sign up in the Autolite Family Charity Drawing. You may be one of 25 persons selected, and you may have the great satisfaction of designating your favorite charity to receive a big share in $100,000. Visit any or all of these car dealers, DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Do it tomorrow, sure. Next week, the true story of a man who alone was responsible for most of the methods of police detection in use today. It's called the Bertillon Method. Our star, Mr. Charles Boyer. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The card game was written for Suspense by E. Jack Newman. In tonight's story, Kathy Lewis was heard as Jenny. Featured in the cast were Jay Novello, High Aberback, Clayton Post, Eddie Fields, Lou Krugman, and Joe Granby. Richard Widmark may currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Hell and High Water, in Cinemascope and Technicolor. And remember next week, Mr. Charles Boyer in The Bertillon Method. This is the CBS Radio Network.